Today we have a classic twist on the favourite three striker formations on Football Manager. Another formation created by last week's absolute banger, Joseph VY2. This one is a 4-3-3, a centre mid, two wingers, three strikers. How does it even work? We'll go through that all in just a little bit. What's going on there guys, Kempi here and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Tactic Tester and today is a 4-3-3 and a traditional 4-3-3 as well. Three strikers, a centre mid, two wingers, inverted wing backs, centre backs everywhere. It's mind boggling. I have no idea how this system even works in game to be honest, but it does and it's absolutely beautiful and you can see it here on screen what a formation this is you have three strikers a defensive winger defensive winger deep line playmakers and support balanced mentality it's all absolutely crazy but you know before we get into that we have to check out how the teams actually do and qpr just got a 6-1 hiding against blackpool in real life yeah well with this formation top for about 42 games of the season absolutely smashed it 105 points a 62 goal difference and we look at the data hub they absolutely smashed it 2.43 goals a game and considering just 1.09 in the championship is absolutely wild because that stuff does not happen if we go into the team view 112 goals the most in the league in terms of conceded they come sixth it is obviously a bit of a, a weird formation when there's two inverted wing backs two defensive wingers i guess they sort of do this down the wings. I don't get how it works. A deep line player for support. You've not exactly got a defensive midfielder. I think in a way, when you actually play in the system, it just almost bugs the game out to where you're just covering so many different roles. In fact, we'll actually watch a highlight of a game from one of the teams because I think we need to see in game how this team actually works and how the system actually works. Goal scorers for QPR, Jamal Lowe, brand new loanee signing in the January window. 31 goals, 16 assists. Tyler Roberts, 25 goals, 10 assists on loan from, um, what do they call it, Leeds. And Chris Martin, of all players, six pace, uh, six acceleration on it, sorry, eight pace, advanced forward, 25 goals off the bench. Big Rob Dickey, 17 goals as well. Lyndon Dykes with 12 goals. Certainly not an advanced forward, Lyndon Dykes, but still getting the goals in, which is very good to see. And QPR predicted to come in mid-table, winning the league, absolutely storming it as well, is very good to see. Quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup as well, Chris Martin, again, doing very, very well. But it's not even the biggest team. QPR are massive, but Napoli are even bigger. And we won the league by 15 points. One game away from Invincible. And how good it would have been to be Invincible as well. Knocked down the run of 16 in the Champions League by Spurs is very annoying. And semi-final with the Capricorn Italia, also very annoying. But there's no doubt that is a fantastic season with Napoli. 91 goal difference, 3.05 goals a game, just 0.66 conceded as well. Absolutely smashing it. And if we go to the Serie A, you can see top pretty much all season, a little spell where they weren't. But if we go to the team overview, uh, most goals was ourselves 116, just the mere 44 goals more than AC Milan. That's not a lot, is it? I mean, they've done all right there. Um, it's not going to keep too much possession, 52% in average possession. And fewest goals conceded. We were second with 25 goals to Josh Daly's Bologna of all teams. So, well then, Josh, you've created a tactic, I imagine, which doesn't concede goals, but you've also come third. I didn't even see that. That is mind-boggling. Uh, but Napoli doing very, very well with Paris and Japan as the manager. Goal scorers-wise, looking at Oshiman, of course, 33 goals, 10 assists. Giovanni Simeone, 29 goals, 7 assists. Raspadori, 18 goals, 14 assists. Amir Romani, 17 goals, 1 assist. And Cavaradonna, 13 goals, 11 assists. From that defensive winger left mid-roll, which is horrible, we know it's horrible. <laughs> um, but this is the formation. Just quickly as well, I do want to just show you again the um, corner tactics. These were used last time out. Download When you download the tactic from Joseph's thing, it comes with the corner tactics as well. And it's, it's part of everything. So make sure you have these on as well because you score so many goals with these beautiful two corner tactics. But without further ado, the actual tactic itself. You've got a sweep keeper and defend in goal. Tackle harder. An inverted wing back on the right, on support. Pass it shorter. Take fewer risks. Get further forward and tackle harder. And that's the exact same on your left back as well. Two ball playing defenders at the back. Pass it shorter and tackle harder. Deep line playmaker on support. Tackle harder. Uh, right winger. Defensive winger. Support. Uh, pass it short. Uh, cross from byline. Get further forward. And the exact same on the left winger. 
You got the two outside strikers, so your right attack and forward and your left attack and forward, pass it shorter and tackle harder, uh, and your middle attack and forward of just on tackle harder. So put your main striker in the middle and then put the other two there to feed him the ball and you'll score a serious amount of goals. Balance mentality, pass into space, low crosses, run defence, focus play down the left and the right, but then underlap the left and the right because obviously you've got them inverted wing backs that come through and uh, then you play it out to the defensive wingers and then you make the space on the inside with the three strikers all come dropping in and getting into decisions it, 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 it i mean that says it all i literally couldn't speak about what this is going to do to the match engine <laughs> at a higher tempo as well you're going to roll it out distribute quickly counter and counter press lower defensive line um, which I really like, to be honest, because the high defensive line tends to absolutely kill you. So low defensive line, I guess, probably makes up for the fact you've got one centre mid on deep line playing American support and then two ball playing midfield uh, defenders in there as well. Um, <clears throat> high press, much more often triggering the press, prevent the short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in. Um, I'm going to find a game that we can watch as well, just so I can show you guys um, what an absolute demon of a formation this is. Just a very, very quick one from me as well, lads. If you can, just make sure to do all your things on all these platforms. Twitch, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube. Subscribe, follow, do whatever you can do. It helps me out massively. It's mental to me that we're nearly on 700 subscribers. And I'm so, so thankful to every single one of you that drops a follow, drops a like, drops a subscription on any of the platforms below, above. It just blows my mind. And I have to say a massive thank you. But if you can, make sure to go ahead and do that. That'd be fantastic. Let me show you an outrageous game with this formation. In a weird turn of events, I'm going to show you a 6-5 loss to Inter Milan. But I feel like it's probably going to showcase the tactic as well as we can. It's going to be wild. There's going to be goals flowing everywhere. It's a corner ball. They've scored a penalty. They've scored 2-0 down. But here we are building the play up. It is Mario Ruby down the left-hand side. Cut it back in to Elmas. Ball into the back stick. Zelinski with a volley and a clean volley at that as well, making it 2-1. Very good movement. You can see just what on earth, if we just hold on a second, just come back a little bit, go on to TV mode maybe. I don't know how we do this. No, I'm on director. That's why it is. Um, head on to TV over here and let's just zoom out a little bit. You just saw how many players are all over the place. You've got the back four. You've got your centre mid, your left mids out there. Is that your right mid? It is. Then you've got your three strikers. It just looked that there was a lot of players in one position there. But Jekko getting a ball through. And you can see the defensive frailties where you haven't got an out-and-out -out DM. Eventually, the ball falls to Mkhitaryan. And it is 3-1 into Milan. Uh, but here it is. A ball forward. Ramroni winning the header. And again, sort of lost in this role here. Because you've got the defensive winger who's come inside to support. You have left this gap wide. But the ball in behind to Jekko. They're going to make it 4-1. But the tactic is so good that... I think you can sort of get away with it. I'm not being funny. The match changing itself is pretty crap. So you might as well have some fun with some different formations. And like we've seen, the results are very, very good with this. You've got Zelinski as well. Finding Lozano down the line. Lozano, ball in the box. Uh, bounced about everywhere. And you know what I'm saying about the dodgy match engine. Eventually it falls to Simeone and he puts it in the back of the net. Di Lorenzo finds Lobotka. Finds Mario Rui. And again, look at this space. You've got your left mid out there. Your inverted wing back on support. Your three strikers along the front line. And then you've got Lozano playing up front with uh, Zelinski out wide. Ball through. You've got options everywhere. And Raspadori puts it into the back of the net. Um, and then we have also got a red card as well. Uh, but Raspadori eventually picks the ball up from Bastoni. Pulls it back to Simeone. Because you've got the three strikers. You've got options everywhere. Uh, we do pull this game back to... I think we're now 5 all possibly. I don't know where we are. Maybe not. Mario Rue, ball in behind. Simeone, another goal. Ball in behind. He gets on the end of it and scores goals. So you want quick strikers that can finish. Ideally, will be very helpful for you. Uh, Correa, Aslani, Lukaku. Defence a little bit drawn out of position there. Uh, he probably could have cleared that off the line there. But Lukaku with a weird little sue. And it's a 6-5 loss to Inter Milan. Um, and then we've got just one more team to show you the results with as well. Just as a sneak preview for Sunday's rebuild of Leon, I thought I'd show you as well the results simming the first season with Leon. Currently in real life, sitting in 10th, predicted in game to come third. And we have actually come third as well. Quite a way off Marseille and PSG. But a decent first season sim, that's for sure. 2.71 goals per game. Conceding 1.76, which to be fair, the average was at 1.41. So in a few more goals. The team itself is okay 
at Leon. To be honest, I didn't realise quite how bad it had got to the point where Dejan Lovran played 34 games. Moussa Dembele, Alex Sander, Lacazette and Amine Saar were the three strikers. Moussa Dembele having a very good time. 41 goals, 13 assists. Sadly, he is off to Aston Villa for the rebuild. Uh, Lacazette, 28 goals, 14 assists. Saar doing one as well. 20 goals, 12 assists as a youngster. Hesim Alwa playing as the left midfielder defensive winger. Rayan Shirky is going to be a massive part of of the rebuild he is going to get lots and lots of games up front and lots of goals up front as well and the idea is to hopefully topple PSG from the top of this league earned spot and get the league earned back to being a good fun league by the end of Sunday's rebuild thank you guys for watching look forward to that on Sunday there'll be a link down in the comments once it is out thanks for watching as usual drop a like drop a subscribe and I'll speak to you all next time <laughs>